Bear Element, episode 21, recorded 28 March, 2013. Wow, episode 21. 21. 21. We're legal now. We're legal. legal. Yay. Yay. Woohoo. This is Clay. This is Vito. This is Tim. This is Wolfie. We're old. Well. We can drink, like Wolfie said. Mm -hmm. Actually, our first episode, didn't we record like the beginning of April? So it's been just about a year. Has it really? No, it's been over a year. We recorded in uh, February 2012. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah? Yeah. Wow. We haven't had many episodes in a year. (laughs) (laughs) Well. What is that in internet years? (laughs) I Uh, don't know. 365 days and 21 episodes, 20 episodes. We we kind of take our hard. time. Yeah, math is hard, and we kind of take our time. And then there was that lost episode, of which you shall never speak. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, and we, we were still getting a lot of the technical things done. For, but that's, yeah, for our newer listeners, there was one recording that we did that the sound quality was so bad, we decided we couldn't even use it. Yeah, but we had the guest on again. Yeah, yeah. So we made up for it. Brandon from uh, Brandon from 360. Oh yeah, and he got yeah. back on us, didn't he? Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was the one that ripped out all our nose hairs. I so. well, have to look and see what episode number that was, but you can look at it in the description. And there's a video of Clay on the website going, oh. getting his nose hairs pulled out. We're just wait, watching wait, Tim wait. going. Okay, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Oh well, let's let's introduce our guests so they Please. can start chiming in. Yes. Ron. Hello. There he is. <laughs> I don't know, Ron. Did you want us to say your last name? Is that yeah, okay? I'm Ron Braun. There you go. And a surprise guest, Ryan. Yes. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? Good. What's your last name, Ryan? If you care to share. May. May. Uh, like the month. Like the month. All right. Now, I'll introduce Ron because I thought Ron would be a fascinating guest because he's he's an anesthesiologist, which I think is really neat. And so we're going to talk to him about that. And then he's also a DJ. So I guess if you're a bear, right, you have to be... Bear or a cub. Uh, you need to be a DJ. It's required. Yeah. <laughs> it's required. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not only an anesthesiologist and a DJ, he's also a professor. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know about that. It's a fascinating character. So do you have to be a doctor to be an anesthesiologist? Uh, yes. There's an uh, anesthetist, which is a nurse basically a nurse anesthetist and the anesthesiologist is an md or a do doctor of osteopathy i'm an md mm-hmm. oh, okay so you had to go through the whole school the whole thing and the whole internship thing and then... yep is it like scrubs um or more I, was it more like er funny enough uh i think of all the shows that, that represent uh kind of how it is in the hospital i think scrubs actually comes closest you know <laughs> really yeah <laughs> ER, you know, all that stuff is very dramatic, and all those stories are kind of based on truth, but there are little snippets that they kind of, I mean, that happens very few and far between, but the day-to-day stuff is actually much more like Scrubs. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's true. It's the only show I watch the, about medical stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So all the medical shows out there, Scrubs yeah. is the closest. But the thing that gets me with all medical shows is when they get something incorrect, you know, with the in, in Scrubs, every time in the beginning where he puts up an X-ray, it's backward, and it drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the little details that you know, kind of people take for granted. It, it makes it hard to kind of break through that reality gap. You know, I'm surprised you didn't pull out House as one of your. <laughs> You're more realistic. House, I, I I haven't watched it. I haven't watched. I literally I can't believe it has it. anything to do with real medicine. But well, <laughs> House is interesting. House takes place at Johns Hopkins, and that's where I train. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting in that regard. But I, I've never watched it. My mom likes it. Oh wow! The coworker described it as Sherlock Holmes in the hospital. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, what made you go with instead of I, I read. That you were a surgeon for a couple of years, yeah. And then, how do you go from surgery to an anesthesiologist? Well, that's interesting. Um, I did two years of surgery uh, training in Pittsburgh, and um, surgery, especially in the Midwest, is a kind of a uh, old boys' club. And um, I actually had a lot of homophobia 
Uh, I was very mm. closeted and I was trying to fit into kind of that mold because I felt like, well, it didn't really matter what I was doing in my private life. Um, and long story short, people found out about it and they started calling me Fruit Loop at work and calling me names and discriminating against me, basically. And, um, and these and, are people with advanced degrees oh, yeah. in one of the most professional situations that you can imagine, and you're still getting treated like you're in elementary school. Yeah, like he said, it's like scrubs. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Right. right, you remember the surgeons on scrubs? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, I went to the program director, who was this ex-military uh, colonel or something, and I said, look, this Whoa. is what's happening. I don't like the way I'm being treated, and I don't deserve it from a professional standpoint, and I want you to fix it. And he said... Well, I don't know how to. I don't know how to address this group of professionals and tell them not to be homophobic or not to be. And I said, well, that's your job, not mine. And you're the boss and I'm going to leave it to you. And, uh, I mean, I had ideas of what he could say, but I didn't think it was my responsibility as a young surgeon to kind of guide this group of, of professionals. So, um, basically I, I gave him Sometime he neglected to correct the situation, and um, it, was, it was a trying time. I spent I spent a lot of time and energy trying to become a surgeon, and and taking extra hours and classes and whatnot. And um, but I, I refused to be treated in that manner, so I left, and uh, I was mad, and I literally uh, said, you know what, I'm gonna. I, co I looked up in the phone book or the, back then there was hardly much internet. And I called, I said, I want to go to the best hospital in the country. And I called Johns Hopkins on the phone and I said, I want to come to your program. And they granted me an interview and I, you know, without meeting anybody, without knowing a soul, I drove to Baltimore and, um, I, I got a job there. Uh, it, it says a lot, you know, it's a testament to, you know, what, if you kind of, as a as a surgeon or, or anesthesiologist, so I had to switch out of surgery oh, okay. into anesthesia. You know, I, I was determined not to 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 let that be a failure. You know, in, in other words, you know, I felt that it was a failure leaving surgery and leaving what I love to do. So instead, I turned it into, well, I'm gonna, I'll show you. I'll go to the best program in the country. And, there you go. Uh, and uh, and so that's what I did. Now the the so the anesthesiologists don't have the good old boy club. Well, they do. Interestingly enough, it depends where you go. So if you, uh, if I went to maybe somewhere in the South, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, I could name several programs, but, um, what was interesting, so I went to Johns Hopkins and there were, there was this kind of already in place network of gay physicians. And what I found there was that I was immediately welcomed into this group. And, um, and it included neurosurgeons, dermatologists, surgeons, anesthesiologists, pediatrician, you name it. And they all knew one another and they had a very tight knit group. And it was immediately evident to me that this is, that was a place where it felt comfortable and I belonged. So the first thing you did is make fun of some poor hetero, hetero little bitch. Like, Absolutely. Here. Yeah. We're yeah, talking about, we're talking about straighty, straighty. Yeah. That, that was, Give it here. That was, now look at what I could do. We're talking about that later, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Vito has something to say about that. Oh, that's funny. Um, well, well that, congratulations. That's a great story. It's, yeah. Wow. On top of everything that you had to do to get to that point, then just to whoop, change Yeah, it was, I was upset, you know. And, um, I was, I, I, I had never, I had never imagined that that sort of thing would happen in a professional environment such as it was. But they, you know, even though they're, uh, professionals, they grow up in the environment that, from which they're surrounded and they, mm -hmm. and they can't separate themselves from the rhetoric and the lies that they hear from their church and their families and whatever. So I didn't, I understood it. I didn't, think that it was acceptable but i understood it well i wonder how many you know um black people or women you know have the same story exactly Do and all that, that work to get to a certain point and just be treated treated with such disrespect right that's uh, pillow biters 
<laughs> well, what's funny about me is that I'm also a black woman. So <laughs> inside, I felt it three times over. <laughs> and I said to him, Girl, like, this is unacceptable. Oh, 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 no. Well, now you guys are doing stereotypes here. <laughs> right. And stereotypes Whatever. exist for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. And so, then uh, Mr. Ryan is uh, a surprise guest and. Yeah. You are a graphic designer, and you're in a band. Yep. I do uh, professional photo retouching. Uh, I have a bunch of clients in New York I do work for. So I was out there for about a month. No, that's fascinating. Yeah. He yeah, retouches my, son of a my, my pictures from Growler. <laughs> okay. So you can make he adds someone... He internet inches. <laughs> you can make a, 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 a photo... Beautiful. And, like they talk about the models being mm-hmm. retouched like that? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, you know, I had somebody at the checkout counter of a, like a Safeway, and he was talking to me about how, you know, it was gross. And I kind of agree with that where, uh, you know, g- little girls look at these magazines and they want to be this. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, when you look at somebody in real life, you're not really like picking apart their face. You know, you're not studying them. You can't really like stare at somebody's face for you know, an hour, but you're frozen in time on this magazine and cameras are not very uh, kind. So I try, I don't do anything too crazy, but you know, I definitely clean up, you know, arm hair and fat wrinkles, pimples, and especially that. HD. Wow. There are a lot of people on TV mm-hmm. that really need to stay at home and watch mm-hmm. video of themselves because HD is not. Oh, nice to oh, Leah, when I went and saw Ellen, the thick, thick makeup that they wear for HD now is yeah, incredible. Yeah, we were just talking about that this morning, me and my friend. Yeah. They, he's saying they have cameras now that kind of help with that. So they're not. Oh, really? Yeah. So people don't look so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, it's better know, than HD. Filters. This is a total aside, but if any of you watch the TV show Girls, like, uh, she's kind of breaking the stereotype. She's got this non. You know, stereotypical body, and 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 uh, she's very natural. And, <laughs> yeah, I saw and, her at the what is it, the Emmys or the Oscars? She's all pouring out of her dress. Yeah, she had to take her shoes off because they weren't comfortable. It's she's like, kind of like the bear of the you know heterosexual <laughs> you know lady community. I think that, that there's maybe a backlash against kind of that perfect look. She's a lady bear. We all have two lady bears. <laughs> Doing lady things. Doing lady things. Oh, my goodness. Our bosoms are pouring out of our heads. Well, why don't we talk about your guys' interest in music? So you're in a band, Ryan. Oh, I've been doing uh, electronic music with my brother for about 10 years. I have a twin brother. Uh, it's called Blunt Headed. Now, wait a second. Take a step back. Is it identical twin? Identical, yeah. He's, you... not, he's not gay, though. Oh, okay. Damn. Oh, that's I mean, fascinating, that's too. That's probably what Vito was getting. Asshole. No, I wasn't. Actually, I was thinking you got the same... <laughs> are you guys the same body size? Mm-hmm. Yep. We look pretty much the same. He doesn't have a beard. So. Okay. And he smokes cigarettes, so he looks a little... <laughs> Whether He looks heterosexual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little haggard. <laughs> yeah. A little beat up. But what does he do for a living? He cooks. He's but cook. he doesn't cook for me. You know, he Bitch. Needs to, Shittiest food ever for me. But <laughs> he'll, he'll go to work and he'll cook for thirty people. I'll have a spam and, sandwich. Yeah, I mean, that's, right. That's a whole other topic. That's being being a, a twin. Brother. But okay, go back to your band. I'm sorry. Oh uh, yeah, we played a couple shows down here. Um, we do live stuff. We mostly do like instrumental electronic music. We just did a mixtape we're putting out here in about a week. And you sit down here. I don't think we've established where you're oh, from yet. Uh, I live in Portland, Oregon. Oh, he's an Oregonian. Yeah. Whenever I hear Portland, I automatically think of Voodoo Port- Donuts. In Portlandia. And Port- well, right. Portlandia, yes. Mm-hmm. And I wish uh, there's bird on it. I wish this show was worse it. because it's actually an amazing <laughs> TV show. And <laughs> every time, like I was in Dallas for TBRU and everybody's like, oh, you're from Portland. Oh, Portlandia. Yeah. I'm just mm-hmm. like, ah, I well, that show. And the grilled cheese truck. <laughs> yeah. I always go to the grilled cheese bus. Sorry, the grilled mm-hmm. cheese bus. And Voodoo Donut. Voodoo Donut. Yeah. Have you tried pickled grilled cheese? No. We can pickle it. Oh, we can pickle everything. <laughs> I was thinking Molly Moons, but that's up in <laughs> Seattle. Sorry. Now, you said that you did a lot of electronic music. Mm-hmm. There's a podcast I listen to on occasion called Electronic Music Bears. I was wondering if you were ever featured on that. Not yet. I've heard about it, but maybe I will now. Give there it a shot. Go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. I try not to do the whole bear thing too much. Uh, 
but I do a little bit here and there. I just like to point out that Vito gives directions like a fat person. Roseanne pointed that out. <laughs> you go to the grilled cheese truck that wants a bus, actually. And then you go down the street to the Voodoo Donuts. <laughs> right, and you make a left <laughs> past the liquor store. Um, you say you do You're electronic ready. music, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you do anything based on samples? Um, we use some samples. I, I try not to use a lot I, I for our stuff. Um, but we, I've done some remixes and do some samples. I, I think it's kind of a sellout sometimes where people just, it's really easy. Really? To sample. Yeah. And you just make a song and you sample it. And I don't know. I like, I, I try to spend a little bit more time on it. Well, I, I have a, my very, very, very first boyfriend would go to the hills in LA at the park. What's the name of the park in LA? Griffith Park. And he would, uh, with a DAT recorder, tape men having sex in the bushes. Oh, no. <laughs> and then he would create electronic music from that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Did it sound like this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's why I asked you about... <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's why I was asking you about samples. I had, I had a boyfriend that recorded me snoring because he, he wanted to set that to music, but I guess I, w I didn't snore syncopated enough or something. <laughs> He's out one hundred. Irritated with me. You kept me up snoring. I recorded it, and then I couldn't even put it to music. God, you suck. <laughs> Guess what's happened when you're sleep deprived? <laughs> what about you, Ron? How long have you been doing the DJ thing? Only about five years. I um, was always into music. I, I trained in classical opera and sang in the concert choir in college and taught myself how to play piano. But I, through medical school, I, I didn't have time to pursue much any of that. And so about the time... When I finished all my training and I was in private practice in uh, Fort Lauderdale, um, I got bored and I said, you know, I want to kind of reconnect with my creative side. And so I started writing and I did some poetry and, and prose and I started doing photography and I was just trying to find my niche and, and, and I found the thing that I was most passionate about was music. And, um, I tried to get together with some people and, you know, form a band or this and that. And it, it's, it's hard because everybody has different schedules and, you know, kind of coordinating all this while you're working full time became very difficult. So I finally found that through just doing electronic music on my own, I can do it at my, any time of day or night. And I just, it's stuck. Wait, so are you creating it or are you DJing? I'm kind of both, you know, it's like I, I have actually created a bunch of stuff on my own and, and, um, but, you know, right now I'm just kind of getting back to learning all of the new music out there and and uh, kind of putting it together. And, and uh, So it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you have any regular DJ gigs here in the city? I just did uh, one at 222 Hyde in, uh, uh, about a couple of weeks ago, and I've done a couple of events in uh, Fort Lauderdale and one in Provincetown. And, uh, you know, I'm looking to do more. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Everybody's so musical. This I know. Bit, right? <laughs> I played clarinet and saxophone. <laughs> I played clarinet and the piano. Fun and, time at band camp. And was in a, exactly. <laughs> that never happened. Band camp a lot. And uh, what did I do? Oh, cymbals in a drum corps. The freelancer's <laughs> drum and bugle corps. Well, I, Traveled around the country. I personally think that our ability to create is what differentiates us from the animals. And, and, uh, um, don't listen, Scarlet. Gay people, don't listen, Squirrel. Gay people in particular, I think, are blessed with a little bit of extra creativity. I think I found myself kind of caught up in this whole kind of idea of what I should be doing. And um, I, I, I felt that no matter how I tried to fit that mold of, you know, being a doctor and this and that, that I, I, I that kind of yearned to be creative kept coming back to me absolutely i feel that too i just i don't know what outlet i want to do yeah. but this this is my you know my hobby this, this is great this, this is creative great for me yeah absolutely you make shit up all the time i do <laughs> very <laughs> great well this is great ron i have a question for you what, uh, what you're wearing I mean, it's like, <laughs> is it creative this t yeah it's a black t-shirt <laughs> so when you were studying to be an anesthesiologist how long do they spend teaching you the reassuring the, the patient by wiggling their foot thing because i went in for emergency surgery and everybody that came into my room said well we're going to take good care of you and they'd grab my foot and they'd wiggle it at the foot of the bed as they were walking out of the room i figured that must be like part, part that of has to be like training. third year of school <laughs> <laughs> well the truth of the matter is they do teach you 
that you should always put your hands on the patient, you know, and no, and no matter where and what capacity, um, it's an odd thing, you know, so I have about 15 minutes to form this intimate bond with the patient, get all the information about their past life and their current life and, 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 um, and have them trust me, you know, mm. so, um, some patients have varying degrees of openness and, um, some patients, you know, you can touch their hand, you can touch their face, you can touch their arm and other patients you just don't know. And yeah. you're kind of scary looking. <laughs> well, I know I was, I would just touch your foot and see where that led. <laughs> well, well, for, well, for me, it was, it was very scary because I, it was bleeding from an artery when I went in for emergency surgery and kept, you know, spinning up blood clots because I just had my tonsils out. And it was like, <laughs> they didn't want to get anything on you. Maybe your foot was the only right? clean yeah, thing. Right. Yeah. They're like, yeah, right, right. there's no blood clots down yeah. here. This explains a lot, Clyde. Yeah, have you does. looked at, did you look at yourself in the mirror at that time? No, I hadn't looked at Maybe myself in the mirror. Scary. Yeah. Maybe I was really disgusting. But what was interesting is <laughs> they brought me into the operating room and as I lay down on the table, I guess the, Blood clots opened up and the artery started pumping into my throat and was spilling out all the blood was spilling out everywhere. And the anesthesiologist, I remember saying, What do you do for a living? And I'm like, Oh, travel agent. He's like, I said, Why? So you're handling this really well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just getting ready to say, Well, I watch a lot of ER. And then he put me under. I was like, Oh, no, wait, I had something witty to say. Oh, well, it's I'm interesting. Gonna... <laughs> I mean, because there is, there is a fair degree of seriousness to what we do and, and, um, uh, you know, for example, I, I, I do, uh, cardiac, I specialize in cardiac surgery, heart, lung trans, heart and lung transplants and, um, you know, difficult cases. And, and there are wow. times when you, you may be the last person that, that, that patient ever sees. Mm. And they, they have had patients where they passed away and you, you know, there's a great responsibility there. And even in the case where you were, you're bleeding from your tonsils, it's, that's actually a very dangerous situation. So, uh, it, it's hard, you know, it's hard because, you know, you, you, obviously you want to confer some sort of bedside manner, but at the same time in your head, you're thinking of all the possibilities of things that can occur. You know, you have a responsibility to try to make it go as, as good as it can, or the surgeries, uh, be as successful as it could possibly be so you know it, it, it's an interesting 15 minutes where you have with that each patient and yeah i, I thought about you know bringing that up but <laughs> it's not very a happy happy thing is you know you've you've seen some people die yeah well no yeah. it's interesting because now that i'm a professor um i i i have these young Students who are, who are very sweet and very, um, innocent and maybe mm -hmm. that have had no experience with death and dying. And, um, I find that I, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I've had experience enough to maybe make it okay for them and maybe kind of hold their hand through it and say, you know, yeah, it, it hurts and it's scary and it's emotional and, um, and it's okay, you know, um, you know, I'm here to listen because there's a part of medicine that's kind of, um, uh, a business and things have to happen on schedule and things have to, and then there's the other part of it that has nothing to do with that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I feel in this position here at UCSF very privileged to, um, be able to help counsel some of the younger uh, students through that and, 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 and residents who are MDs but still in training. Are there any common misconceptions of anesthesiologists that you'd like to clear up? Yeah, I mean, you know, the surgeons think that we just sit there and read the paper all the time, which is not true. Um, <laughs> I, although, but, I, but, but I've seen that on TV, so it has to be true. <laughs> well, there, you know, there, there's always a little bit of truth in that. And, 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 um, uh, there's actually a recent study that sh that it shows that if you, you know, you may have a, t I've had surgeries as long as 24 or 36 hours. So if you, if you don't keep your mind stimulated in some way, it's actually worse. You know, you have to kind of, you know, keep your mind occupied. It's like, I, I liken it to flying a plane. There's, there's the takeoff and the landing and the, those are, are obviously very critical. So putting the patient to sleep and waking them up are very critical. But there's a long period where, you know, you might have a flight to Australia where you're just kind of sitting there and you have an occasional turbulence, but um, a lot of it's uh, mundane, you know. So, well, are you, you typically in the operating room through, throughout the whole procedure? Then? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but my father had a lung transplant 
Six months ago. Where? Five months ago. Uh, UC- UCLA. <laughs> oh, <nice>. Tijuana. <laughs> Ron- the Ronald Reagan building at UCLA. Discount lung transplant. <laughs> and uh, the guy that got the other lung was walking around the hallway. We were like, yeah, that's the guy that got the other lung, I guess. Uh, there's something in the biz, <laughs> in the medical biz, that they call motorcycle riders donors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the same he way. was a motorcycle rider. It was a, coming yeah, from, a donor. You know, the same two way. Two and a half people on the podcast that ride motorcycles. Yeah. Hello, yeah. donors. Hi, donors. Well, yeah, I've, we'll se- <laughs> I've seen, yeah, obviously, a lot of that, but I, the same way that, 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 uh, know a lot of physicians who like to fly planes and, um, the people who, teach them to fly called the planes doctor killers because they, you know <laughs> I, I think that any any time you kind of take risks in life obviously that there's there's there's, there's that so anyway, you were saying about your father yeah you know, yeah he's recovering but he's not exercising enough yeah so i, I think his <laughs> he was pissed off about how painful it was this hurts. right he didn't really know <laughs> I mean, it's like he didn't well, think it through. It happened so fast. <laughs> Actually, you know, he qualified, and he's too old to have two lungs, so he could have one lung. And he, he qualified, and his insurance, his insurance is awesome. So that worked out, and he got approved. And then he had a little issue, and a lung came up, and he said the doctor recommended no. And then, and then uh, the doctor rec- another one came up, and he did it, and it really like blindsided my dad. <coughs> And I really wasn't for it. I was like, I don't think you really know what you're getting into. He doesn't take pain very well. <laughs> Oops. I mean, they have to open you up. How do, how and do you stick t- somebody <laughs> else's lung in? There. How do you how do you take pain, Vito? <laughs> <laughs> I have a very high tolerance for pain, actually. Take a break because we've reached our half an hour point for BearRadio.net, mm. and um, wow, this is wow, this that's been sort interesting. Of- Breezed on by, hasn't it? Tends to fly. Really tends to fly. Okay. Well, alrighty, guys. Well, for everybody listening on bearradio.net, that's the end of part one. Turn in next week for part two. Otherwise, check us out online at bearelement.com or on Facebook, The Bear Element. For iTunes user, just hold on. And we're back. And we're back. Second half. Oh, that's Clay. Part two. And this is Tim. And this is Vito. This is Wolfie. And, and two guests today. I'm Ron Brown. <laughs> Ryan May. And they're not that shy. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them is. Well, in the first half, we, we met Ron and, and we met Ryan. Ron is an anesthesiologist and DJ. Professor. professor. DJ. And Ryan is does this fascinating thing with photographs. So definitely listen to the first half and find out about that. And is in a band. And I'll have those links on the website. Uh, on the break... It's like Oprah behind the scenes. <laughs> you were telling a very amusing story. Well, <laughs> you, you know, you, you see all, uh, all sorts of, of patients who come into the ER or require surgery. And um, it's certainly uh, the case that, that uh, truth is stranger than fiction. But I, I suppose I can um, maybe get off subject a little bit and segue is that uh, you know, one of, one of the things that, that, um, uh, bothers me about all this time, effort spent being, or becoming a physician and the training and, 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 and the care I give for patients is that, uh, uh, despite all of that and despite the fact that I pay, uh, lots of taxes is that I don't have equal rights. And, um, uh, it, it, it's very upsetting to me that, that, that I am, despite the fact that I can take good, such good care of people's family members, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, that, uh, I'm still seen as less than somehow. And, you know, well, Ron, 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 that's your choice. God would want you to have equal rights if you just rejected your abysmally sinful life. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be fine. I would accept that if, if you then, Gave me a different tax bracket, right? You know, um, it's it, not the government's fault. You're intrinsically disordered. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's it's this whole you know taxation without re- representation and this whole kind of hypocrisy that I'm some sort of deviant. 
Um, well, it's, I, it's I, becoming a constitutional issue right now. We've got the Supreme Court. They just heard oral arguments on both the Prop 8 and the DOMA, despite what the tea part, teabagger politicians said, that when the Supreme Court rules, it is constitutional. <laughs> so, you know. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it, it is going to be constitutional <laughs> in my lifetime, whether they wanted to or not. It's just, it's time. It's important. I think it's important. We all stand up and, 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 and celebrate our self-worth and our, and our, and our born right as citizens of the United States to, to, to have equal rights and whether we want to marry or not, to adopt or not, to work in the, uh, armed services or not. Um, I, I do get fired up about it because I, um, I, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, we've made lots of strides yeah. and then, uh, the oral arguments, <laughs> I said oral, <laughs> oral. um, arguments <laughs> for the, well, there were some photo ops mm -hmm. taken prior to the Supreme Court hearing these cases. And in one of them, one of the justices, I guess his cousin, that's a lesbian, mm -hmm. was photographed. Yeah, with, I think it's with, uh, Justice Roberts. And then Justice, Th Justice Thomas, you know, there's a picture going around on Facebook of him and his white wife saying, I hope he remembers that not too long ago his marriage was illegal. Right. You know. Oh, and beyond that, I mean, let's talk about how the Republican Party, um, used us as a tool in order to, uh, gain power and create, um, kind of, uh, this, the separation and created a uh, diversion. Uh, so there's a lot that isn't being, s s talked about that that even some of the supreme court justices are i'm sure guilty of that um that that this is a, a lot of the general public population of the united states has been purposefully swayed against us so you know and using the catholic church and using religion to and using us thinking that we are we are weak we are minorities we are inconsequential um, and, and, and I think that should also be discussed because it's, it's, it, there's, you know, there's a lot out there besides just <laughs> ignorance. There's, you know, there's. Well, things, I mean, well, things are totally turning around. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, the, the Republican Party doesn't have the power that it had. Because the number of people that are that homophobic is decreasing in this country. You know, you talk about ignorance. The more of us that come out, the more, you know, the more mothers and grandmothers that know. There was a great bumper sticker when I lived in Texas that was just real simple. It just said, mom knows and it had a little pink triangle. You know, because, you know, mom's not going to put up with your bullshit. You know, once mom accepts you, you know, woe be the, I remember the first time someone told a gay joke to my mom after I came out to her. My sister said she'd just about ripped the person's head off. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, in spite of all her I, own. Can I push on your stool? <laughs> which is which is which is why I think uh you know um the more of us who do speak out and the more yeah. of us who say that you know you you can be a physician you can be uh uh whatever you want to be you can be the president of the United States you know you have to believe in your own self-worth and you have to speak up and 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 it it, 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 it it's a still it's an uphill battle like uh uh even though apartheid ended in south africa there's still racism even though that the supreme court ruling will go in our favor this this sort of discrimination won't end so we i think oh, it's yeah. just important that we all need to continue to not rest and say well, you know, we have this and we have this. I think, you know, we shouldn't rest until we have the full spectrum of human rights. Well, I think the least that anybody could have done this past week is gotten on Facebook and changed their profile picture to the red. Oh, episode. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I mean, that's the minimum. I think <laughs> I was the only person that didn't do that. No, I didn't do it either. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, but was, then, but well, then, um, I, I'm sorry, Tim. I, I found this really cool one. I don't know if there's any Doctor Who fans out there, what? but it was a Dalek. The Did you see that? It was a Dalek. The Dalek. I, know. I saw the Dalek. The two lines cool. was really cool. I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead. Nothing. I was just there was actually a lot of back and forth on Facebook on Tuesday about it. Um, you know, just people saying, "I, you know, I'm not going to do that because it's it's a a cheap and easy you know show of support." I don't know. It was just really denigrating what the the whole idea was behind it and. The way that I looked at it was, if you're going to put one of those, you know, red equal signs as your your profile picture, I mean, it says to a lot of people that this is what you support. 
and chances are there's people in your friends list who aren't necessarily gay friendly. It started and a lot them, of dialogues. Yeah. It really did. But for you know, because people see that, and and there's straight people that did that too. It wasn't just gay people. <laughs> you I know, mean, I totally forgot about that. I totally forgot that I have people on my friends list, friends and family that wouldn't know what that is. Mm-hmm. And I would have had an impact on them. I totally forgot about that. Right. Well, I mean, sh- and just doing that, whether you're having that sort of conversation with people or not, it's the more people that do it, the more people are seeing it. And the more people that are seeing it, the chances are there's more people that aren't necessarily open to the idea of gay marriage and equal rights and all that sort of stuff. They're going to see that too. And when they see all these people that are thinking a specific way that they don't necessarily agree with, they're more likely to... To well, reconsider their views. And there's a picture of the Chief Justice going, wait a minute, before we vote, how many people on Facebook support this? <laughs> you know, so. Really? It's a, it's, it's a, oh, it's, it's a joke. That's right. It was a joke. No, but yeah. I, I think that, you know, the, the, the day-to-day things that you do um, as a gay man, woman, transgender, <laughs> whatever, are far more important than what picture you put on your Facebook. I think, you know, the, the, the little acts that you do um, on a regular basis, I think that's important as well. I don't think we should get caught up in who did this or who didn't do that. I, I you know, I, I, um, it, it, it's, it's much broader than that. Um, and, and I certainly, I, I certainly reserve the right to not conform to either what the gay population says I should do or the straight population. So if I don't want to change my profile, I won't. And well, sometimes oh, yeah, I, I'm not right. saying you know well, anybody's a dick for not doing it. Right, right. Sometimes, sometimes it's right. preached to me oh, though. It's I a lot of preaching it. to the choir. Right, it's exactly. Like, this is my audience already, and my audience already agrees with me. I'm not getting out to another audience. I but, forgot though that I had people yeah. that. Don't normally see that. I'm, I'm well, actually, there's going to be a lot of, of opportunity to talk about this because they have until June to, to make a decision. So right. we'll be able to revisit this some more. So maybe let's just move forward into a different topic that's a little more topical and timely. How many of you are going to feel comfortable flying once TSA allows people to carry knives on board? I totally will because I love mm. to stab people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TSA, this is Clay, and I did not say that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Do your little voice scan. Different voice. <laughs> stab I'm or so, scalp? I'm so excited. <laughs> I get to peel my apple and stab others. It's good because when I crochet... I can uh, <laughs> cut my line now. I don't have to cut it. So, so what is it exactly that the TSA is saying that they're going to allow now? Just little pen knives. Pocket knives that don't click, that don't stick open. So like a little Swiss Army knife. Under a certain blade length. Under two inches, I believe. I mean, I think if you had a, a slew of suspicious-looking people, like maybe 20, come in with knives, you know, they have enough... Oh, that's stereotyping, though. Oh. I didn't say uh, what I described them. I'm just like, suspicious-looking people, and, and and I said that I think that they would raise a red flag that hey, maybe something's going on here. So, I mean, I, I think I think there's so much fear mongering in this country, mm-hmm. and and uh, I think maybe part of part of this is kind of to relieve that because the truth of it is, it's like I I hope. They, they loosen up a little and stop, you know, frisking grandmothers and babies as well. You know, like that would be great if that was nice. We're taking away nail clippers, you know. Right. Really? Like, I mean, a little really? more common, common sense. I'll cut you, bitch, with my nail clippers. That's right. <laughs> I'll give you manicure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, to me, the knife thing doesn't make any sense. It's like, no, no knives. Just no knives. No knives. Well, they're trying to speed up boarding. And, well, know, but there's other ways to do These are the do same that. people well, in I the mean, South who go, I need my knife because I, you know, I love my knife and my gun. Well, no, it just my really well, sense I mean, me. like, it's a weapon. My bag that I carry, you know, my courier bag that I take everywhere I go, I have a Swiss pocket knife in there. And it's just, there's been a couple times where I was getting ready to go traveling and it was like right before I re- left the house, I happened to remember, oh shit, I got to get that knife out of there or otherwise they're going to take it. Right. And it's just one of those things. And I know, like, my brother, you know, he usually has, like, a Leatherman tool thing that he carries around with him. And he's had a couple taken from him at the airport. Well, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's no TSA for buses. Anybody take a bus recently? Oh, <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't done with the other thing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I actually had something confiscated. Has anybody had anything confiscated from the TSA? Nail clippers. Oh, they did confiscate it. For I reals. had a... Um, you're going to laugh. It was actually my brother, like my, a hairpin. 
that I got at the Renaissance Fair, but I used it as a bookmark. <laughs> I don't have hair, so it's funny. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was really cool. Going. Uh, and I used it for as a bookmark, and I had it in my book, and I totally forgot, and it was completely sharp, like a knife. I mean, it could, someone could do a lot of damage with that thing. Well, going back and to they, what they you confiscated were it. saying earlier is that, you know, working in the hospital, we've confiscated a lot of things from people's rectums. <laughs> 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 Well, now we get to the anecdotal <laughs> note here. Maybe they need TSA in the uh, right. hospital room. Well, I think that they, 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 their hope is that people... Was there was, any knives? Was it, there were some uh, knives. Yeah. There was one lady in Pittsburgh who stored her money in her, in, her, in her private parts, and she came in for bleeding because she was trying to get it out with, with a screwdriver. So I, I think that... <laughs> if since the the buses you know, or the TSA Wolfgang's allows about to lose it over uh, here allows <laughs> knives, there'll be less people hiding things in their rectum. So I think that's good. <laughs> from, a, from a medical standpoint, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, yeah. What what real quick? What things have you found inside <laughs> of rectums? Personally, yourself. Personally, myself. Uh, um, Billiard balls. Well, the the thing about rectums is everybody has the same story, which is amusing. Which I fell on it. Right and, uh-huh. and, and like <laughs> and uh, another was a, a, a canteen. Uh, another uh, like you drink water out of a canteen. Yeah, like a uh, you know um, you, you could probably uh, you name just about anything. And then and my favorite was one of my I didn't see this myself, but it was a textbook, and somebody had a flashlight on an X-ray stuck up the rectum, and the, <laughs> the little caption said. This patient was delighted when this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where am I going to find references for this on, on the web? And I bet, you know, I bet I'm going to find them. I'll link to an article. Google image search. Well, it, it puts me in an awkward situation because as a gay physician, they look at you as though this is your people. Like, what are they doing? And you're like, well. Are you serious? I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, kind of going back to stereotypes and assumptions, they oh assume God. that you somehow are, you know, know all about this. And, and, uh, and uh, you can you, find you a do. date to do that for you. <laughs> you don't need to fall on something. <laughs> Before I forget, I just need to do a little back scratch and thank Ron for not violating HIPAA and telling him what he found up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, I want to hear this one. Oh, go no, on. HIPAA, HIPAA. No, go on. Let's, let's just say it was magical. Uh, well, that's funny. <laughs> well, enough about the TSA. Anybody take a bus lately where you don't have to deal with the pesky TSA? Yes, actually, I oh did. Oh, my God, you did? Well, Tell us about it. I had heard about this service called Heaven's the Megabus, the <laughs> which is a, it's a two-level bus and has internet access, and it's supposed to be really cool. Power outlets. So I didn't uh, oh. power outlets in every seat, and I but said, well, you know, I didn't get a... Big boy seats? Yeah. Well, no, not really, but... Better than first class on Delta? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it was only seventeen dollars to go from from L.A. to San Francisco. Wow! Oh, wow. Um, and I didn't get a plane ride in time, and I didn't feel like spending sixty bucks. And I had the eight hours to kill, I guess. And uh, so I did it. And uh, while I was, I got a killer seat, the very top, all the way in the front. So I got to see all the bugs. Oh, hit, so, so I was on the double decker bus on the very wait, top. That's a plus? Had, seeing all the dead bugs well, splattered you know, on the. Okay. You know, the driver would turn you go, the windshield wipers on. And it was just neat sitting in the front. And then I was sitting next to uh, a handsome what did, man. What did the overpasses look like when you were coming up? Oh, like <laughs> scary shit. And then you know what? It's funny It's funny you said that because the, the cute bear guy that I was sitting next to, which we'll talk about in a second, um, I said, oh, yeah, and I wanted to show him pictures of the Megabus or something. I can't remember. And so I did. I went to Google, and I put Megabus, and I said images, and it was pictures of the Megabus squished in the front <laughs> with the top half exactly where we were, right sitting, where we were sitting on an overpass. Oh. So he's like, oh, my God, no, I'm totally scared. And we were like, overpass. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa Yeah, that's, whoa, a, that's a travel whoa. faux pas, you know. Yeah, should have done that. Anyway, this guy was fascinating sitting next to me. burning bus accidents. Nice. I, I found out about it. 
passengers? I wasn't hitting on him. He was I trying was to make him scared so he could comfort him. <laughs> oh, come here. I'll comfort you. Come here, baby. Aww. Rest your, rest your head on my bosom. It'll be okay. Aww. Tough crowd. Okay. <laughs> so it ends up, this guy, tell me his name, Josh. Josh. Um, Hippa. Don't forget. <laughs> no, no, That's you. Names, no, no, no. No, he's promoting himself. I'm oh, going to yeah? give you, I'm going to give you the website. Um, that he has, and he wants people to donate. What he's doing is he's hiking across the United States. So he's a power bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure what that means. Well, it means he's got big ass and big calves, and he wants to show them off. No, he's a little Thank guy. You. Thank a you, little Jeff. Guy. Well, he does wear these well, skimpy so little shorts. Well, so much for Vito giving him the link to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So, but but what's unique about this guy besides that, the fact that he's a power bottom? That he well he's got a, he's in a band, um and he Get also out. sorry I, I <laughs> so he must be a didn't mean that bad it's to say he's in a band of course he's in a band, um and he um uh is Christian oh and, you just outed him <laughs> <laughs> well he had I went and checked out his Maybe website Jesus life. loves all of us. <laughs> tough crowd. Yeah, tough crowd. So he has a link on his website about his faith. So and is he a homophobe because he's a Christian? <laughs> well, that is the question because I, I said to him. Will you blow me? <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, now I would like to pip you out on my podcast, <laughs> but um, I would have to let you know. Uh, that, that we're gay and are you all right with that? And he came back with, are you okay that I am of, of Christian faith? And it made me think. Did he say it matter of fact? Did he say it? <laughs> did he ask you that matter of factly or defensively? No, like really honestly. And it wasn't defensive. It was like he totally turned it around. I was, it, it, it really threw me off. I was like, I'd never, he was more concerned about me accepting him. Baby, he was trying to say cut or uncut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some filters going on here. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get to the core of this. Topic. Is a, this is yeah. a... <laughs> Do you like him cut or uncut? I'm Christian. So is Ron being heterophobic with his comments? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole point of this. Wait, I that, feel like I've been thrown under this metro bus. Well, yes, it's you not are, a metro bus, it's a <laughs> mega bus. <laughs> mega bus. I've been thrown with Wi Fi and outlets. And, <laughs> and outlets and Christians. <laughs> oh my. So the whole point of this is that, yes, I found myself, wow, this is kind of like a reverse thing. And I'm facing my heterophobia because I make fun of. Hetero's all the time. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting, too. Maybe we'll have to have a separate topic on this, but there are a lot of Christians who feel like they're being persecuted for cramming their religion down other people's throats. And one of my favorite things in this whole Facebook thing with SCOTUS is, yeah, you may think, you know, your Bible may say that, you know, you read your Bible and you think this is wrong, gay marriage or whatever. Maybe you should read the Constitution where it says that your religion doesn't get to pass laws. Boom. You know, yeah. and... They're like, oh, we're being persecuted. And I'm not saying that's what this guy was doing, but there does seem to be a fair amount of that. No, he's he wasn't. He's just well, like, cool. this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm up to. And Hey, I, don't get me wrong. Some of my best friends are Christians. It, you know. It's okay. <laughs> but, 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 but no, it's an important distinction. Is he propagating anti-gay hate? No. Because that's what I would want to know. If he's no. in a band going, you know, kill the queers or whatever, then, you know. No, that's a, was, that's an important distinction. There was none of that. And um, Did you hear his music? Uh yeah. Yeah, I like the band. Yeah. 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 He needs money. Um he was supposed to have a crew come he with him. He seems a little too uh. granola to be all the hate stuff. But oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. And he was just a, such a sweet guy. Does he like to drink Jesus juice? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he had his Bible with him. No, but he likes his scissors. Well, <laughs> and he had and he had money in his in his uh, what do you what do you call the it? Not the, waist, the waistband. The fanny pack. The fanny pack. Oh, so in his fanny pack, like Mom sitting post. out there. That's how you should have known he was heterosexual. You wore a fanny right pack, yeah. and you talked to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, a fanny pack. Red flag. God. He's a hiker. He must have been really hot. <laughs> um, and I'm like, dude, when you go to San Francisco and start walking around San Francisco, you better not show that you have money. <laughs> yeah, not cool. Oh, yeah. So I see there's a, you know, he's not from here. So I think there's a little innocence going on. Uh, Had he been unattractive 
Would you have still talked to him? Yes, I was talking to everybody that was next to me, <laughs> bitch. That's our veto. Well, we know what Josh will be doing this Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. Yes. And um, so a lot Hunky of the Jesus f- contest. The, well, that's what we'll be doing. Yeah, that'd be funny if we saw him at the Hunky Jesus yeah. contest. That'd be great. <laughs> so but, bring it um, together. A lot of people have different traditions around Easter time when it comes to their sweets and candies. So our this or that segment this week. Take it away. It's time for this or that. And thank you, Jeff. Uh, There's a little that, sounder we'll throw in there. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, So this or that this week, we'll go around the table, starting with Vito. Peeps or Cadbury eggs? Wow. I have to choose? Yeesh. Or you, you could do an or, either or the other. We're going to be here. You know, way. if given a choice and I had the peeps in front of me and the eggs in front of me and I had to choose one, I would go for the cream eggs. Okay. Definitely go for the cream eggs. Let's go clockwise. Scarlet agrees. <laughs> if there weren't jelly beans, then I'd say the eggs. Okay. I'm a Cadbury egg guy over a peep. How about you, Mr. Ron? I much prefer creamy substances going down my throat, so I'd have to say peeps. Oh. Ooh. What? <laughs> <laughs> going against the girth. That didn't make sense. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Are we? I'd probably do peeps. The, the I don't know. I don't eat dairy. I'm a vegan. <laughs> what's what's a and you ate a wait. peep and you're a vegan? What does that have to do know. with a marshmallow? A marshmallow is <laughs> from bone marrow, right? They have gelatin yeah, in them. Know. They have yeah. gelatin in them. Yeah. Oh my god! And you're so a vegan? You have you ever found oh, a peep up anybody's ass? Uh, no, but I'd like to see if you how many you can hold. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger box. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. I bet I can stuff more than you. <laughs> I think we need a bigger box. Oh, okay, power bottom Tim. Peeps or Cadbury eggs? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Cadbury eggs. Uh, four to two. Interesting By the way, enough, there, there are some peeps I saw when I was picking those up. We have, we got peeps for everybody tonight. That they're dipped in um, dark chocolate. Yes. Ooh. 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 And oh, you didn't get those for us. They did, I Actually, I didn't see them today. Nah, nah, nah. So both They're, our guests chose peeps, and all the elements chose Cadbury eggs. Actually, I, wow. I think I might even be a little partial to the M and M's just because that had that awesome commercial in the eighties. The thank you, Easter Bunny. <laughs> bok bok. Yeah, everybody loves that. Everybody loves that commercial. <laughs> bok bok. Bok bok. Good times. Cool. Well, you were saying that you had a different um, candy tradition in your family. Oh, you C's. Yeah, we would do C's, C's molasses chips. What? Yeah. Every Is that Easter, like an old country recipe. What yeah, the now they're called diabetes know. chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if you've ever had the molasses chips from C's. That we would just, my mom would give us a whole box of molasses chips on uh, Easter. See, well, on the East Coast, my step grandparents lived near Asbury Park, and we would go there and get all the chocolate bunnies, but we'd also get the saltwater taffy. Mm-hmm. And that was Ooh. always a big. So, are you saying you grew up Christian? What? Mm-hmm. Well, that's Easter. I mean. That's yeah. a good question. I, I did. Christian, I grew yeah. up Catholic. Yeah. Well, Easter's Easter's basically a pagan holiday that was adopted. No, pagan holiday is basically a made up holiday just like Easter. They're just let's make something up and have sex, you know? Yeah. Well, but they, it just, it, <laughs> it just, I mean, they're all just made up shit. It's but they're all, but they got appropriated by the Catholic Church to Yeah, yeah well. Yeah. The, yeah. the Catholic Church, the, all of them. Because the Pope was gay, he's like, no, darling, let's make it fabulous and let's have a bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hippity scop. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to take back my back scratch. And um, while I think about who I'm actually going to back scratch, I, who, who wants to start our back Are we scratches? really? We're already on the back scratches? You got about four minutes left. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Is that your back scratch, <laughs> Jesus Christ? <laughs> Uh, you know, no, you I know. Can't. Now, if he comes out of the cave on Sunday and he sees his shadow, it's another three weeks of winter. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make this quick. Um, just, I weeks. wanted to touch a little bit back before what we were talking about about Ron, just sort of about being yourself and everything. Last week, and I had a friend of mine who's moving away. Tell me what a positive impact I had on his life. Um, just we met about the time that he was starting to come out and not really quite comfortable with who he was. Um. And he had told me just this past Sunday that prior to meeting back in 2005, he had actually tried to take his own life a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, But through just me being who I was and just being myself and not necessarily trying to influence anybody's life, I had a really positive impact on his life and just, you know, realized that there was a way to live life and be gay and not be this sort of 
you know, abomination. Um, so yeah, just being yourself out in life, you never know whose life you're going to touch. So Amen. You know, can't say that en- uh, enough. So back scratches to Eric for that. Um, getting the rest of it, back scratch to James, back scratch, back scratch to Ron and Ryan for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And the other elements also to John Ashfield who filled in for me last week and the hearts for being here and I didn't get a chance to meet him. So. We'll get you a koozie, Tim. As long as you don't <laughs> shove it up your ass with all those peeps, for God's <laughs> sakes. Vito? <laughs> well, I'm gonna you guys saying that, aren't I? are crazy. I want to back scratch Kenny. He's still hanging in there. Ta-da! Hey, uh, Kenny. He's, he's a trooper. Okay, I'd like to also back scratch Oso Meloso Solis. Our 800th Facebook like. like. Yay! Yay! Oso Malo- who? Uh, that's what his name is, Oso Maloso Solis. I think he's from a Latin country. Yeah, fake name. Uh, Probably. Since uh, Oso means bear, surely. Yes, <laughs> yes. Surely. So. <laughs> surely fake. Uh, um, probably. Uh, but Fair thank news. thank you for being our 800 Facebook like. That was pretty awesome, and it's rising fast. Uh, I also want to thank Ron and Ryan for being guests tonight. Thank you so much. Backscratch, uh, Rob, uh, from the East Bay, who organizes our little, uh, Manny Petty excursions and brunches. Oh, Those yeah. are always awesome. Just wanted to give him a little prop. And of course, all of our new listeners and everybody, all the elements. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. I would like to give a very big backscratch to both Ron and Ryan for showing up. We really appreciate that. Uh, in addition, I'd like to give a big back scratch to my roommates, Paul and Jesse, and uh, my friend Dave. Thank you very much, guys. Mm, cool. Well, this is Clay, and in addition to my regular back scratch to Bill for being an awesome partner, and Miss Scarlett, who's with us here tonight, and not quite on her bed, so maybe I should slap her around instead of giving her the back scratch, but she's a good dog. Let's have Scarlett give a bark. This is for the lesbians. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Scarlet's giving back scratches to all y'all, all you bitches out there, and um, Ron and Ryan, thank you very much for coming in. Ryan, next time, if you could limit your talking, you know, so someone could get a word in edgewise, that would be awesome. I will work on that. Awesome. Go, Ron, go. Uh, I, I'd like to give a, a back scratch to, I moved here actually in May. It's almost been a year to, uh, first of all, to you guys for having me on here and giving me a voice and allowing Ryan to be here. His music is, is actually really, really good and creative and unique, and I hope everybody gets a chance to listen to it. Um, we'll get some links up on our page. Yeah. And, um, and to just everybody here in San Francisco who have been nice and welcoming and friendly and really reaffirming to me about what it is to be gay and what it is to have a sense of community um, to all of the people at UCSF for welcoming me, me as well, including Dr. Mays, the chairman, to, you know, all my friends and family. I, I, I feel blessed to be here and to just be able to talk about whatever. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that I, I made the move here. So thank you all. Does he know that on the 300 and... 66th day, he's no longer fresh meat. All <laughs> change. <laughs> well, that's when I do my drag routine. So I'm new again. You know, who's her? <laughs> Go, Ryan. Uh, mostly just thank my friends uh, that I stay with here and hang out with. I have a bunch of good friends for having me. One, one last thing um, that I didn't get to mention earlier. Um, you know, I, I think it's interesting that a lot of, uh, you know, the gay hate and homophobia gets passed down from generations. I think if people um, didn't have any parents or anything, I don't think people would instinctively hate gay people. And I always just say, you know, if your grandpa wanted to dress you for school, like, would you let him? And like, if your dad wanted to pick out your clothes for school, like, would you, would you let him do that? And more than likely you'd say, no, like, what the hell do you know when you were born in the forties, you know, like, so I just say, you know, well, why would you let them tell you how to think about gay people? You know, why would you let them um, tell you how to think, make up, you know, your own choices, live your own life with how you're how you're living it in current society in current days? So, word, yeah, yeah, very nicely put. Good thought. Yeah. Thank you. So I I remembered I've got a couple of people I want to back scratch. I want to back scratch my mom, who has been tremendous in helping me with uh, fundraising. 
and, uh, she, getting and donations for my the AIDS life cycle rides. She, she sent out a bunch of stuff to all her friends. Hey, my, my son's doing this ride and blah, blah, blah. And, and your so, mom's totally hot. <laughs> if you're into 65 year old women i'm sure there's somebody you know might find her attractive She's but hot. yeah so there's it's been great <laughs> she sent out to all her friends and her friends have been donating to my fundraising for the AIDS life cycle ride timmy's mom timmy's mom, mom is hot <laughs> <laughs> and oh, with that pandemonium <laughs> we will we will suck. See I hate you. you next <laughs> tuesday Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Yeah. The end of part two of Bear Element episode 21. <laughs> Visit us at bearelement.com. <laughs> <laughs>